Well, ladies and gentlemen, come gather around, come gather around, come gather around. It's nearing winter up here in the Great White North, and in our part of Canada, we're changing tires, getting ready for winter. Now, I usually sit around and chat with students about tires and what do you want to get for winter and how you want to deal with tires. So let's just talk tires in general. One, it's winter, so we're going to take a look at this right here. This is a set of tires that my son has bought for his car. And where we are in Canada, we don't get a whole lot of snow, like maybe a foot. For you guys in uh, metric world, it's about a foot or 30 centimeters-ish. Not usually a lot of snow. Um, my recommendation for where we are is it isn't so much deep snow that's an issue, it's ice. So when you're looking for a winter tire in places where it's largely icy, you want a tire that has a lot of sipes. The siping are these fine slices in the tread that can uh, help flex and be soft and grip into and stick onto the ice. There's a lot of different manufacturers do different things. Toyo did uh, walnut shells ground up into the rubber and it sticked, sticked, it sticked really well to the ground. Back in the battle days when I was young and Dead Sea was only sick, uh, you just put winter tires on the drive end of your vehicle. So that's what I did. But Toyo had made some skookum tires that, uh, man, they, they gripped on the front of my front wheel drive Mazda. And after hitting a guardrail on the Coquihalla, uh, I got back to the tire shop and I had two more put on the back. And since then, I run four winters, four winters, okay? You really want to do that. The tire technology has really improved. Bridgestone Blizzak, they build it with like a foam rubber. It's like foam uh, for the first half of the tread. And then after that, it's just normal rubber like others, but that foam suction cup kind of grips to the ice as well. Some folks like to run studs. Studs have holes cast into the tire and then with a stud gun you press studs or like nails or spikes into the rubber to make it grip a whole lot better. My opinion, studs on a scale of 1 to 10 are like a 2. They're not a massive improvement. Awesome on ice, horrible on pavement. Although when you come to a stop it sounds like applause as all the studs are kind of going like clap, 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 clap. But it just, it's kind of nice when you come to a traffic light. This one is a fairly aggressive one. This one's made by Michelin. It is an X-Ice Snow. Now, on my beastie over there, I've got Michelin X-Ice radials, and they are very definitely a good ice tire. A couple of years ago, we had a huge dump of snow. There was like massive amounts, and I, you know, like all the other school districts were shutting down because it was so much, like, don't come to school! And I didn't hear that the school was closed, and our district was taking their sweet time and making the call, so I drove all the way to work on the highway in a lowered two-wheel drive 70s half-ton pickup with Michelin X-Ice radials. I freaking got to school. If I can get to school in a 70s half-ton Chevy pickup, two-wheel lower drive, bleh, school should be on. Nevertheless, it wasn't. So those X-Ice radials were really good in ice, and they were the only tires that got me stuck in deep, wet snow twice in my lowered 70s Chevy pickup. Nevertheless, I still believe in them. This one's a little bit more of an open tread, so there's more openness in here than just sipes. And this open tread does a good balance between ice with the siping and snow with the open tread block. So this is actually pretty good. You don't want to run these in the summer because they're such a soft rubber compound that they're going to disappear pretty quick and they, they're not going to last for you. But, uh, you know, maybe you're trying to save money so you're running winters all year round. It's not wise. Let's take a look at some summer tires. So these are the tires that I originally had on my Hyundai Accent and I put them on my wife's Accent and I bought these. They are a um, Kumo? They're a Kumo Solas TA31. I bought them because they have a tread wear rating of like a bajillion. When you're looking at tires, there's some things you want to look at. Let's look at some of those things. So if you can just sort of make this out on the top of here, it says tread wear 500. Treadwear is the rating of kind of how well these tires are going to last. And the, the number is kind of subjective within uh, brands, but they, there's like math and it's supposed to mean something. But generally, as a rule of thumb, the higher the number, the longer these are going to last. And I bought these because they had a Treadwear rating of 500, which means they will probably last forever and not stick to anything. Um, you get smaller, you get into like a 300 tread wear or a 200 tread wear is a pretty grippy tire for sure. But with grip comes lack of life. So if you want a tire to last forever, 
uh, it's not going to grip. If you want a tire that grips, it's not going to last forever. I chose these to last forever. Uh, and after driving them on my Hyundai, I really did not like them because they, they didn't grip at all. So, <clears throat> I went and bought these. These are a little bit more aggressive. Now, one of the reasons I chose these is really because they're freaking cheap is what they are. They were cheap. But what I like about them is they're, they're big, very big open grooves here, which helps me cut through rain because I don't want to hit this, hit a puddle in a hydroplane. This tire as well, good uh, circumferential grooves. These grooves help me cut through the water. They don't really let the water out easily, but I'm less likely to hydroplane. And this wasn't bad for deep standing water. This one was pretty good as well. But this one I also got because it was cheap, because I do like cheap. And this one has a tread wear rating of uh, 280. Let's put that that way so you can actually see it. 280. And it's a fun little grippy thing. Makes me feel good driving this one. It's fun. It's not an ultimate grip, but it's pretty fun. The other thing to look at at tires is over here. It's the DOT number, and usually on one side of the tire there's going to be blah 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 code, and the last four digits are important to you. This means it was made on the 40th week of 2021. I don't like running tires more than six years. Uh, they definitely age. Like the old uh, pink pearl erasers in elementary school back when I was a wee laddie and the world was black and white. Those pink pearl erasers erased beautifully when they were new and then just shredded the paper as they aged because they get harder. Tires age and they get harder and then they just plain don't grip. The softer the rubber, the faster they age. So this was a 2021. A little older than I want, but I got them pretty cheap, and I'm okay with that. The Kumos on my wife's car, also 2021, they're okay. I'll probably run them, and they're at least they're full six years. This tire is not one you want to run on the street. It is not street legal. It's a bias ply racing slick. Um, and they, while it doesn't have any tread, slicks come with these little grooves to tell you how much tread you have left. And there's lots of tread left on these slicks. However, they went off in 15 minutes. <laughs> it's like uh, $1,500, 15 minutes. Oh my gosh. But they gripped really well. And slicks have, have different kind of detailed information on how grippy you want them to be. Uh, and these are on R175. These aren't even the softest. I think there's like a 150 or a 125. With the Goodyear slicks, the smaller the number, the grippier they are, if I remember correctly. It's been a while. But this boldly says, for racing purposes only, not for highway use. And they fit on a ferociously wide wheel. They look crazy. They're actually 13 inch, 13 inch rims, 10 inch wide. So they're, they're a pretty crazy set of slicks. I have this from a memento of my old racing days. Where's my Bruce Springsteen Glory Days song? Let's do a quick change of venue. Boom! And we're in the school shop. And this is the way the winter tires used to be way back in the bad old day. Ziggy zaggy, big lugs. This one happens to be uh, drilled, I guess. You can, could have put uh, studs in these. You can't do them once they've been driven on, but if this was new, you could have studded these. They're studdable. And back in the day, these were better than an all season but they weren't frighteningly so. And I, you won't see a winter tire with this particular style unless you're doing a complete vintage restoration of something. Got a couple more tires. So way up here is an old school bias ply tire. It's white walls, kind of cool. Bias plies are the way the tires were made way back in the day and they worked. They didn't handle quite like uh, radials do of today. And when we were switching to radials, you could get like radial tuned shock absorbers because radials just handled different and responded differently than the bias ply ones were. But that's how they were done. And I found that by the side of the road and I hung it up on the wall in the school. Up above that is an ultra high performance uh, Toyo of some kind, I think. It's got a tread wear rating of 200 because many motorsports require a 200 tread wear rating, which is just a number. I said previously, they aren't interchangeable from all manufacturers. It's just a way of comparing different tires from the same manufacturer, and they can put a tread wear rating of that for 200, and it might be a whole lot less. The next one is this guy, which is, oh, I gotta look at it. The next one, I have right here. This is a street legal competition tire. It has 
Uh, it's an old one. I mean, these, these all age, and I usually get about a year, used to get about a year out of these. And this is a 2005 tire. And we should have a Treadwear rating somewhere on this. If I can find it, looks like it might be right here. So this has a Treadwear rating of 30. So we're talking about tires that had a Treadwear of like 280 or 350 or 500. This is 30, which is like, it's, it's not going to last. And it was street legal. It's a street legal competition tire. It came with holes drilled in it, kind of like the slicks do, and there's a couple of shadows of holes right there and there, and it came with two circumferential grooves that qualified as tread. They're long gone, and now we've got like melted rubber all over it, but there was measurable tread, which made it legal. Not that you want to drive that on the street. This one's just another slick, a smaller size slick. This one is a trailer tire. Trailer tires are identified by ST for like some trailer. And uh, these are not really designed to be driven like, like with a motor. They don't handle the same loads, but they can hold a vertical load from a trailer. And it's, we don't really care a whole lot about the tread for these. And the reason I have this one off is because it is fiendishly old. And when my, the wheel fell off of my trailer in the middle of Ben Volan Road in Kelowna, the towing company sheared one of my wheels getting it off the trailer. So I just bought two new tires, because whatever. Here's another one, old school, this one. This one came from a donated vehicle years ago. I don't even recognize the DOT code on this. It's an old school way of doing it. But this is the way all seasons have been done for years. And it's just kind of open, probably get some of the water out. But this thing is so old, despite the good tread on it, you would never drive this. You'd, you'd, be, you'd, have, you'd have more fun skating than trying to drive your car with these tires. Over 10 years old, it's just kind of nasty. And you really shouldn't be running car tires where your trailer tire is supposed to be. Trailer tires are designed for trailer, not for cars. And car tires are designed for cars and not for trailers. And I know a lot of you guys have put like car trailers on your, car tires on your trailer, and I've done it too, but these aren't really designed for the same kind of load that a trailer has done, and these can end catastrophically. Leave a comment below if you too ended catastrophically. But trailer tires for the trailer. So this is a Pontiac Firefly, Chevy Sprint, Suzuki Forza, uh, you guys have, may have seen these a hundred years ago, and many years ago I took this one, cut the floor out of it, built a tube frame, put a small block Chevy half under the hood and half under the dashboard. I converted it to rear wheel drive with a 350 Chevy under the hood, and I had some tires that uh, were all season, pretty decent ones that I drove one year and then stored in the basement for nine more years. And then I put those tires on the Firefly, and with a V8 in it, it accelerated about as quickly as a stock Firefly because they just plain did not grip. And I ended up going to a more Skookum tire for just to make sure it would stick and go somewhere. So a quick look at tires, things I look for. Date codes, tread wear rating, uh, tread pattern, compound of the tread. It all depends what you want to do. There's a tire for every season. And if you do live in a place where you get snow, I'm a huge fan of buying another set of wheels and have tires mounted on that because you're flipping winners every spring and summers, every fall and all that stuff, it starts adding up and it's cheaper just to buy another set of wheels. And then you can bolt them on at home and don't have to pay the man. As always, thanks for watching. Buy a good set of tires. The only thing that's sticking your vehicle to earth is your tires. So get some good ones, take care of them, and uh, replace them before they age out too much. As always, thanks for watching. Take care, and we'll see you again, probably in spring. Toodles.